Welcome back, everyone, to the Slab Stocks podcast and YouTube channel. My name is Aaron, your host, and today we have another interview, uh, this time with Josh from Cardboard Chronicles. Welcome, Josh, and thanks for joining me today. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on. Yeah, Josh is a big LeBron collector. If you check out his Instagram page, at Cardboard Chronicles, he's got a ton of LeBron stuff on there, really nice gold refractors. Uh, I saw a rookie patch auto on there, which I'm sure we'll talk about today on a lot of really sweet stuff. And he runs his own YouTube channel too. So definitely go check out Cardboard Chronicles. Uh, Josh, thanks for joining. Uh, what do you got going on over at Cardboard Chronicles? Yeah, so I started Cardboard Chronicles like a year and a half ago, almost two years. Uh, and I started because there wasn't there wasn't a lot of YouTube content at the time for, for sports cards and particularly basketball cards. And uh, I just thought it was really interesting, all the different collectors that were out there. So I just started interviewing them one by one. Uh, and I just started it to gain some popularity and people enjoyed the interviews. So I started interviewing a bunch of different collectors. I've interviewed um, Brent from PWCC. I've interviewed the original designer of like all the Fleer Skybox cards in the 90s. I've interviewed Nat Turner, who's purchased, you know, like Monster, Michael Jordan, PMG Green. And I've interviewed him twice, actually. Um, so it, it's kind of like become its own thing where I, I, st I just interview people, uh, you know, once or once or uh, once a week or once every other uh, week so nice guy pretty big interview base there then lots of high-end collectors it sounds like lots of monster cards what's the biggest card you've uh you've talked about with someone other than that michael jordan pmg green which i'm sure that's the biggest one um <clears throat> i've had some guys with like lebron rpas you know um I'm trying to think of like the biggest card uh, Lou from uh, Sports Cards Exchange has some monster stuff. He had like one on one Connor McDavid stuff, like the Shield autos, and uh, put me on the spot a little bit. I'm trying to think of other guys, um, like tons of like Jordan exquisite stuff, LeBron exquisite, like just crazy stuff. Yeah, that's wild. And how did you even get starting cards? How long ago? And what's your journey to to collecting? Yeah, so I collected as a kid, um, you know, pretty modest as a kid, obviously didn't have a lot of money. And then I got back into it through Pokemon, oddly enough, in 2016. And then I kind of got bored of that after a little while. So I kind of transitioned over to, to basketball cards. And, you know, I've been doing that ever since. It's been it's been pretty exponential since then. I, I've gotten into it pretty heavy, you know, over time. Nice. Awesome. And LeBron's your guy, I see. You know, I'm sure you like Jordan, I'm sure, but LeBron's the man for you. Yeah, I mean, based on my age, I didn't get to see a lot of Michael Jordan, even when his like final season, that last dance, I was only like nine or 10. So I don't really have a lot of fond memories of Jordan, but I did grow up watching LeBron, you know, all the way from high school, uh, you know, into the pros. And I've followed his career closely all the way through. And uh, he's always just been my favorite player just because, you know, I love watching him play. And, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously a, a great player and, and the best of our era. So pretty easy decision for me there. I do also collect Penny Hardaway because I, I, I liked him as a kid when I was younger. I actually liked him more than more than Jordan when I was younger. So I do collect a little bit of Penny Hardaway still and I do have some Michael Jordan stuff. Awesome. Sweet. Good stuff. How did you start your your LeBron collection and what was the first card you ever got of him? And did, did you buy it thinking, man, this thing's gonna be worth a ton down the road? Or were you just like, oh, I love LeBron, want to collect and let's see what I can get? Yeah, people see like my collection and some of these other really high end guys, and they just kind of think, "Oh, he just must have just had a ton of money and come in and and bought like a, a bunch of expensive stuff." I actually started very modestly, very small. I think my first card was like a Spectra. It was like something super, you know, super cheap at the time, and I, I wasn't thinking about investing or money at all. Uh, it was just, you know, I enjoyed kind of looking at them and. Uh, and then over time, you know, you kind of realize what, you know, which cards are more desirable, which ones are better looking as you get into it, uh, you know, which ones are more expensive and which ones have like better long-term value. But definitely when I started, it was like, that would have been 2016. I think, you know, I just bought something random on eBay that caught my eye. I don't even know if I knew what it was or <laughs> it was probably numbered, but you know, at the time I, I had no idea. Yeah, it's crazy. And I see a lot of gold on your page. It looks like gold LeBron everywhere. Is that your thing? Are you are you trying to amass a lot of gold refractors or, or you know, anything that has to do with gold? Yeah, when I first got a little bit heavier into it, I was buying just Topps Chrome refractors, just the silvers, because I liked I just like the look of them. I like the action shots. I thought they were neat and, and there weren't that many of them. So I was able to to get them kind of quickly. And then once I got all the silvers, um, 
I thought, you know, why not go for the gold? And then uh, I just started picking them up slowly. And then I just sort of, and then I got the rookie Topps Chrome Gold Refractor, which is the toughest one. So once I got that, it was like, well, I might as well just like go for all of them and, and make this a thing. And then, you know, after that, they started kind of like gravitating towards me. People would, would have them and, and know that I collect them. So I just sort of like was able to get them all. I just completed the set. I got the last one. This is the Dang. 09. Have you seen that account that does the videos of the cards? He just posted this one. Like he posts oh, really? the actual video of the of the clip in the card, and then he posts like, the card next to it. That's sweet. That's awesome. Um, nice. So, so I was able to cl- complete the Top Scrum Gold Refractor set of LeBron. That's great. A lot of your stuff I see is from like that Cavs, the first uh, Cavs era that he had. Do you collect any Heat LeBron stuff or any Lakers stuff or any second? your uh second stint calf stuff or is it mostly just that that first first trip in cleveland um i wouldn't say that i collect it necessarily i do i do buy some of it and hold it depending on you know how the value of it does uh but i don't have any currently like in my main pc um i've owned like the 2012 prism silver psa 10 a couple times I went, I've had a lot of galactics um so that would have been like second year stint calves lakers stuff uh, I have some like modern stuff like status. I have uh, some like mosaic prism stuff. So yeah, I do have some of it, but I wouldn't say that it's like my main focus of like my actual PC that I collect long term. Yeah. So are you using these other LeBrons then to try to trade up and and sell and get these bigger ones that you're after then? Yeah, because I mean, the the truth is that the modern stuff uh, sells a lot quicker and a lot easier, and it's kind of like it's front of mind, and people are are interested in that kind of stuff. So I have to mm-hmm. at least dabble in it. I can't just uh, ignore it. So I do buy grade, you know, I sell some of that stuff. So I I, I do have some of that in my inventory at, at, at oftentimes. Nice, awesome. And scrolling through your Instagram page, I know it's the two thousand three exquisite LeBron RPA. When did you acquire that and how that go down? And was it just like a rush of getting that card? Like, I feel like that's a card where you have to like fly out or drive to where the location is to get it. So that one was, I got that in December and it was the golden auction. Um, yeah, it was a pretty crazy, it, the auction ended at like 9 or 10 PM of my time, which is, you know, I'm on the West coast. So that's pretty late. And I was just downstairs by myself calling all my friends freaking out because I, you know, I, I had planned it for a few months. You know, you can't just like buy a card like that on a whim. I had planned it for probably three months because I knew that that Golden and Heritage were coming out with different copies. Uh, so I had spent like probably two and a half months selling cards to just get ready for it. And I, you know, I sold like so much stuff. I have like a sold album in Flickr and it's just like full of stuff that I sold to get that one card. And then that night, you know, I just put in my bid and paced around the house nervously. And then I ended up winning because on golden, you actually, when you bid, when you become the high bidder, it restarts the clock to 30 minutes. So you don't actually like, you can't snipe. So you basically have to bid and then wait 30 minutes to see if you actually win. (laughs) Dang, that's, that's crazy. I couldn't imagine the 30 minute wait period. That must've been the longest 30 minutes. It was a long, at, at you know, different like periods during that 30 minutes. It's like, oh, I hope I lose. Like, you know, <laughs> what am I doing? And then it's like, no, I want to win. And then <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I mean, you're pretty connected to the high-end LeBron community and high-end basketball community in general. Did you know guys you were going against in the auction? Like, do you know some of the dudes that were bidding against you on it? Um, I think Nat Turner was bidding on it. <laughs> but some of, some of the other guys that I, that I knew might be interested in it, uh, you know, I discussed with them, like, here's what I'm thinking. And, uh, a lot of the guys at, at this level, like we'll kind of like back off for each other. Um, you know, let certain guys get cards based on where they're at in their collection and, you know, what kind of work they've done to get to it. Uh, you know, that's not always the case. It's not always that smooth, but in this case, there was a few guys that definitely like, let me, let me have that one to myself. So I'm grateful for that. The, the high end community looks out for each other for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so different because you, you, I mean, if you look at our page, we, we throw up a post and we get like 100 plus comments and some of these things of people discussing different investments, all this stuff. And none of those guys that actually even really like know each other. And then your, your type of community in this high end basketball area is just, it's so tight knit. I feel like even when I talk with Chris at House of Jordans, it really feels like that everyone knows each other. Everyone's trying to help each other, you know, build up their collections. It's crazy to see like the, the difference in the hobby and how, different people can interact with each other. I don't know. It's awesome uh, that there's yeah. so many different spectrums of it. 
I think that's mostly just because like there's less to go around at this level. Like this stuff is so rare and so hard to come by that like we almost have to work together to like divvy it up. Yeah. So we're kind of like this like herd mentality of like, oh, this one's going to this guy because he's been you know he's been waiting in line or whatever. So it's yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely different. How how long did have you been after that LeBron two thousand nine tops Chrome gold and like so like how long do you have to wait for one to pop up because I know you said you just completed the set. Um, there's a few that I, like I kind of know where a lot of them exist uh, amongst the gold refractors, but I would say that I'm just I'm just patient with it. I'm not like in a ru- I don't need to like complete the whole set right away. Uh, I just kind of wait for the right deal to come to me and. You know, this is like a marathon, especially in the high end. You can't just like, unless you unless you have unlimited money, you kind of have to like space it out and be patient. So, you know, I probably could have bought that at various points, uh, but I was just kind of waiting for like the right time when I had the right amount of funds for it and when it like it was the right price and, uh, you know, the stars aligned. Awesome. That's sweet. And this LeBron PC you're building, do you see it as part investment or full collection? Like how how, how have you like, how do you perceive your LeBron collection going forward? Is this something that someday you, you part with some of it, you know, for various reasons, or is this like, man, I'm locking this thing up my whole life? Yeah. I don't want to say that I'd lock it up my whole life just because, you know, I don't, I don't know what the future holds. Uh, I would definitely sell some stuff if opportunities presented themselves for me to like, you know, retire or for me to like start my own business or if something like major life changing came up like that. I would definitely be willing to part with it. Um, cards are still secondary to like my, my personal like career goals and you know what I want to achieve outside of cards and my family. So uh, like, honestly, I would love to hold it as long as possible. That's kind of the goal. And I have them like stack ranked to a point where like if I had to sell something, the one on the bottom goes, you know, and the, the RPA is sitting at the top. So it's like, it's like the last line of defense. Hopefully I never have to sell that thing. And I just, and honestly, I just like keep, upgrading my top few cards Mm -hmm. um i so i definitely like sell to like upgrade and keep like funneling it upward so it kind of just is like an ever-evolving pc it's not really like locked into one set yeah gotcha and and those little bronze you know i'm not like super in tune to these like you know massive card selling like you know i keep tabs on a lot of lebrons but how often do those exquisites pop up for sale because i feel like it's like you know when the one of those things come up for sale i'm sure that your community and a lot of other people just go crazy. Like, holy cow, LeBron, Ricky Patrick is up for sale. Yeah, they come up for sale like maybe two to three times a year. There's been like four or five in the last year, which has been kind of a bit of a, a bump in that. And I think that's just due to like what we're seeing with the market increasing so much. Some of the people that have held these so long, like they almost can't hold it anymore at, you know, at these current prices and what they're into them for. So some of them have popped out recently, but we we haven't really seen like the big nine five three color patches come out. It's been mostly like one color patches, two color patches, the eights. Mine's a BGS eight. You know, it's not it's not like the best copy ever, but so some of like the those ones have been coming out. But I I haven't seen any of the really high end ones come out in a long time. Yeah, and then I asked this question on Instagram actually during our Jordan week. But how do you perceive the dual logo man of him and Jordan, LeBron and Jordan from two thousand three? Is that like a huge Holy Grail Carter is kind of like, man, I heard, you know, cause I heard some things are like, Oh, the logo man might, might be from like a wizard's warm up of MJ or stuff like that. Like, is it, is it just a mad card or is it like, dang, this is the real deal. Like big, biggest card I've seen. I've had people ask me like, once they know I'm into high end basketball, cause they, they honestly just want to know like, what's the most expensive card ever. And I usually think of that one, the green PMG Jordan, the like 97 game Jersey Jordan, auto um you know some of like the really high grade vintage but honestly that, that one does fall into the category just because it's like it kind of hits hits all the crazy check boxes of like logo man is like the one-on-one it's the most expensive it's lebron it's jordan it's lebron's rookie it just has like too much going for it to like hold it back in any way you know like it's got all these like super high-end check boxes that it meets uh i don't know as much about the patch wizard stuff if it matters uh, like where the patch comes from doesn't seem to matter as much. Like even my LeBron RPA, that patch is from like a photo shoot. It's not like, it's not yeah. an in-game patch. Right. It's just the, what the card means is really what, why it sells for so much. You know, it's not yeah. as much about like what it actually is. Uh, and let's just say that like a nine, five exquisite LeBron were to come up for sale. What's a projected sale price you think, or, or what would what you like, is this record breaking a sale? Is this getting close to bumping over that Jordan LeBron dual Olga man? 
No, I don't think it would beat the logo, man. Uh, and I don't want to like, I really feel weird giving prices up some of this stuff because I have so much of it. I feel like it's a bit of a conflict of interest, but I, fe- I feel yeah. like that. Not, I feel like a nine five would do like 500 to 600,000, maybe yeah, more. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Something such around that a, range. Such a huge card. Yeah, no problem <laughs> there. Wow. I can't even imagine that. That's that's insane. That's worth like. Have you been watching the trout, the trout red refractor? Is where where's that through uh, for sale through? That's on Golden right now. No, I I honestly don't like tune into too many of those auction places. I did see that it it was selling going up for sale, but I wasn't sure when. Did, when was it listed? Uh, like a week ago. It's already at two hundred grand. Two hundred grand. That's crazy because <laughs> the super refractor sold for what four hundred grand like two years ago. Yeah, this I've heard that this is probably going to beat the price of that just because that was long enough ago where now the five is like risen in value. That's crazy. Oh my gosh, 200k for a trout 95. Is that 95 that red auto? Yeah, I don't it's yeah. out of 5. I'm not sure which cereal it is though. Oh, uh, got you. That's crazy. Really really ridiculous right there. Um <laughs> Yeah, so it sounds like you've built a pretty sweet collection and you got all this LeBron stuff. Are you are you in the investing game, so to say, outside of LeBron? Like do you actively do a lot of like Luca and Zion? I mean maybe not Zion, but other players? Yeah, totally. Um not as much on like uh the younger guys. I mostly do like the vets that kind of like are either very established or they still have some room for growth. Like a good example is Patrick Mahomes. Like I already know he's really good. He's won a Super Bowl. He's established, but he still has some of that like potential to go higher. Another good example is Giannis. You know, we already know these guys are really good. Luca's getting really close to that for me. Like he's he's a good uh, strategy to start investing in. Um, you know, as far as like Zion and Trey Young and some of these like younger guys that are still trying to figure it out, uh, I tend to steer away just because I'm I like to avoid some of the risk of the ups and downs, like the short term ups and downs, just because I'm not able to keep up with the daily prices, which is, I know is like your guys' bread and butter, and and I know there's a lot of money to be made there. Uh, I just uh, I'm just not as good at it, so I, I try to think a little bit like it's more like medium term stuff that I look at, I guess there. Yeah, lower the risk and still know that you have something that can grow in value. That's a really good strategy, by the way, for people out there. Um, awesome. Wh- wh- where do you see Cardboard Chronicles going on YouTube? What's your plan for, for the show or on Instagram? You got any plans? Um, just like get bigger interviews, I guess. You know, like uh, I just kind of like uh, wait, you know, see what happens and see what comes to me as far as interviews. And I try to reach out to certain people. I'd love to interview like a few people from like Panini and Upper Deck and some of like these big companies that are currently working there. After I did the interview with the the woman from Skybox, like you just get like a crazy perspective on what goes on behind the scenes, how the cards are made. So I'd love to do some more of that. And then, you know, any other high end collectors that are interested in a lot of those guys like don't want to go on camera and talk about their <laughs> collection. So I, yeah. you know, I, ha- I have to be respectful of that. Uh, the, the Instagram um, I've been getting more into like what I'm buying and selling kind of like getting more into that side of things. That's been kind of fun, but it's also just like showing my PC talking about what other pe- I like to also post what other people have just like in the spirit of cardboard Chronicles interviews. It's just kind of like, generic hobby whatever interests me whatever you know i i like to look at i I repost and stuff like that so i don't have any like specific plans other than just keep going keep it up that's exactly how i think of it you know just keep keep the train moving and don't stop yeah because i mean the hobby feels like it almost feels like it's doubling overnight every night it's just like every time i look up there's twice as many guys that i've never talked to that are dming me like hey what do you think about the price of this what should i buy and it's like man, these guys are just like coming out of the woodwork. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Tell me about it. There's so many people that just come and DM (laughs) us too. And it just gets on overload. I'll tell you that much. Um, To end it off here, you have one dream card left to buy for the rest of the time. What were you looking at? Uh, Well, I'm currently trying to get the O3 gold tops finest LeBron. Mm. Uh, to match my Chrome, and that one's numbered at 25, so it's a little bit harder to find. But like super long term, I mean, I would love to have like a 95 LeBron RPA. Obviously, that would be really sweet. Um, maybe like the there's a parallel RPA at a 23 for LeBron. He's got the, the you know the RPA at a 99, but he also has one at a 23. Something like that would be fantastic. 
Um, and, you know, I used to say, like, there's no way I'll ever get the LeBron RPA. And now I, I have it. So it's like you just never know, like, where things are going to go. And you never know, especially, like, the, the way the market's growing and, you know, some of the increases in value of my other stuff. Like, I, I could potentially see myself moving into something big like that. It's just sort of, you know, wait and see and, and not rush into it and, and just be patient. Awesome. Sweet. That sounds like a great goal. And uh, I had a pleasure talking about your LeBron collection. I mean, I love LeBron myself. I've got a couple cards of him, um, but nothing like you have. So it's fun to hear about the flip side of the coin, the guys that can pull in the, the big whales. That's awesome. Uh, thanks, Josh, for joining us. Uh, anything you want to say about Carver Chronicles or where people should find you? If it is YouTube and Instagram, then go to there. Yeah, it's a cardboard underscore chronicles on Instagram. So check me out there. And on YouTube, just search Cardboard Chronicles and uh, start watching some interviews. I think I have like 60 interviews and I, I always have guys DM me like, I just started, I just found this and I'm starting to watch through. I got to get through 60 of these. That's kind of the fun part about YouTube is like, I come out with a new one and all the guys that keep up with it are like, oh, I just have to watch one. But the guys who just join are like, oh, I got to watch 60 of these. <laughs> it's like so a joint documentary and, times six. They, they're yeah, they're right. Just, they? And they're all like an hour long too. So it's like, it's a lot. <laughs> Dang, that's awesome. Great work. Um, thank you guys for watching the Slab Stocks YouTube channel. If you guys want to go and learn more about sports cards and different collectors out there, a uh, great place to start is with Cardboard Chronicles. And Josh does an excellent job interviewing folks and getting their perspectives on the hobby, possibly the investment game, and what collections they are building. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>